Earth 720 million years ago. It's a period called the Tonian, about 200 million years before the Cambrian explosion. Multicellular life hasn't fully evolved yet and exists in its most primitive form imaginable. Besides some small, primitive sponges, single-celled life still remains dominant on our planet. In less than 200 million years, life would make the drastical multicellular leap known as the Cambrian explosion. Yet 700 million years ago, Earth's climate took a turn for the cold. Evidence suggests that by 650 million years ago, the entire Earth was covered beneath a one kilometer thick layer of ice. An event commonly referred to as Snowball Earth. The reason as to how the entire planet managed to get itself into a glaciation of such magnitude is something still argued about today. When the Tonian period ended, the Cyrogenian period began. The Cyrogenian, as its name implies, was marked by multiple large-scale glaciations. The relative proximity of the moon at this time meant that the tides were stronger and more rapid than they are now. The days were approximately 21 and a half hours long, and there were 13.5 synodinic months in a year and 410 solar days in a year. The Earth's atmosphere was much poorer in oxygen to 12%, while carbon dioxide levels were around 1300 parts per million, about nearly three and a half times as much as the current levels. The average surface temperature across the entire period was only 5 degrees Celsius. While geologists initially believed the Cyrogenian marked a 90 million year long uninterrupted global ice age, as stated before, the Cyrogenian was actually found to be a period of not one, but multiple glaciations. The beginning of the Cyrogenian was marked by the Sturgeon glaciations, a 40 million year long period of severe ice ages. The Sturgeon glaciations likely consisted of various melting and freezing intervals, though the possibility of a massive 40 million year long uninterrupted ice age has not been disproven. There then followed an approximate 25 million year long warmer period of greenhouse climate. The interval ended about 650 million years ago as the Marinoan glaciation began. And it is this Marinoan glaciation which lasted 15 million years, which is believed to have encapsulated the entire Earth below a kilometer of ice. But how could an ice age get so severe? During the Earth's history, there are several periods of greenhouse and icehouse climates. A greenhouse climate is dominated by warm climate, as icehouse climates are dominated by cold climates. While it would be easy to think Earth right now is in a warm greenhouse climate, we are actually right in the middle of an interglacial interval of an icehouse climate. You might think the climate is relatively warm, but it's nothing compared to the Jurassic, when warm climate reached into the polar regions. The poles back then didn't even have ice caps. The current Holocene glaciations are caused by variations in the Earth's orbit, and while this may have been a contributor factor during the Cyrogenian period, it wouldn't be sufficient to plummet the entire planet into a 15 million year long global ice age. The cause of an ice age of this magnitude has to be more complex. So what could be the possible causes of this? The Cyrogenian started notably when the then timed supercontinent Rodinia began to break apart. The most accepted theory is that this disturbed the carbon silicate cycle on Earth. Carbon on Earth back then was released from volcanoes. In the atmosphere, mixes with water vapor to form acid rain. When the rain falls down on rocks, they mix to form new carbon chemicals in the water. The water is carried by rivers, which take the chemicals to the ocean, where they are deposited as limestone at the ocean floor. It is well known carbon dioxide is a good greenhouse gas. Too much and the earth overheats, too little and you get the reverse effect. Evidence for a drop in atmospheric carbon dioxide was found in the rocks. The going theory is that CO2 was being removed at a great scale. A supercontinent breaking up exposes a lot of additional rocks. These rocks would have removed a lot of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and might have locked it away at the ocean floor. But this still wouldn't amount for enough to cause a snowball earth. Because normally at least some of the Earth's land masses are located too far north where it's too cold for this process to occur. But the supercontinent Rodinia lied completely at the equator and the weathering process went into overdrive. Atmospheric CO2 levels crashed, and so did the Earth's temperatures. Today, life helps balance the carbon dioxide levels. Plants absorb the CO2 and animals breathe it out. But 650 million years ago, the only life forms on Earth were single-celled bacteria, the most dominant of which 
cyanobacteria. And these guys were actually making things worse by absorbing more CO2 and locking it into limestone reefs called scrometallites. We now have a very clear picture of how the Earth plummeted into a global freeze. But if we count up the factor that the albedo played during this, it gets even more severe. Sea ice is one of the most reflective surfaces on Earth. The sun's warmth hitting the Earth gets reflected off the ice back into space. The more ice there is, the more light gets reflected back into space. Hence, the more ice will form. You can see how this would take a runaway effect. Below 30 degrees latitude, as far south as North Africa, the ice reflects so much it reaches an irreversible tipping point, and a runaway ice house effect will take place. Two giant ice caps crawl from the poles towards each other until they meet at the equator. And so, by 650 million years ago, the snowball Earth has started. It is possible some small liquid bodies remained at the equator, even if only seasonal, but mostly the entire globe was covered beneath ice. During the Marinoan glaciation, average global temperatures fell to as low as 50 degrees below zero. Virtually all the sun's heat and energy got reflected back into space. Under such conditions, life most certainly faced doom. The only things alive back then were single-celled bacteria, but even their survival seemed improbable. It seemed unlikely they would be able to survive an ice age over 20 times longer than human history. But here we are. Here I am making this video and there you are watching it. Life clearly did survive. The question is how? The toughest question actually turns out to be the easiest to answer in this video. Life on Earth follows a simple principle. Adapt or die. Even during these severe and long cold periods, life did adapt. Even today, we can find tiny organisms able to survive underneath hundreds of meters of glacier ice without sunlight. These bacteria are known as extremophiles, after the extreme environments they can be found in. Extremophiles today have been found able to survive under kilometers of ice under Antarctica and glaciers. Adapted to live without the sun's heat or energy, they are able to survive in the darkness of these harsh conditions. They survive in the hardiest conditions for life, and if only a small group of them survived Snowball Earth, they would have been quick to repopulate the Earth afterwards. So for 15 million Million years underneath the ice caps, life survived in the darkness. But what could possibly bring an end to this frozen scenario? How did the Earth escape Snowball Earth? So how did Earth get out of a 15 million year long glaciation that covered the entirety of the planet? The answer both explains how the glaciation lasted 15 million years and how it ended. The simple answer is that the carbon dioxide slowly came back into the atmosphere and turned the ice house into a greenhouse again. While the surface was frozen, the Earth's core remains hotter than the sun. Volcanoes. They have been around from the day the Earth was born, but even a volcano's heat and power would make no impact on the ice. However, volcanoes do play a vital role in the Earth's carbon silicate cycle. Beyond lava and ash, volcanoes pump out gases when they erupt. Among the many gases they spew out is carbon dioxide. It's only a small amount on an atmospheric scale, but over 15 million years, this accumulated into a lot of carbon dioxide. In 2011, the Grimsvatten volcano under the Vette Jerko glacier in Iceland busted through nearly a kilometer thick layer of ice. The eruption was violent enough to disrupt air traffic throughout Europe for weeks, but above all proved no ice cover could contain a volcanic eruption. During Snowball Earth this would have been no different. The Marinoan glaciation would prove to be an insustainable scenario from the start. As we previously went over, the rocks are vital for depositing carbon into limestone, but during Snowball Earth all rocks were covered beneath hundreds of meters of ice sheets. With nothing left to absorb the carbon dioxide, it slowly refills the atmosphere, forming a blanket that traps the sun's warmth again. Temperatures slowly begin to rise, until 635 million years ago, the ice begins to melt. It is thought that during the snowball earth, the ice's massive weight pushed the crust down. Now that the ice is melting, it bounces back up again, creating more weak spots and more volcanoes, which in turn release even more carbon dioxide and rise the temperatures further. And so, the melting gathered momentum. While the planet was frozen, the sun's ultraviolet radiation reacted with the ice to form massive amounts of hydrogen peroxide. Now that the ice is melting, the hydrogen peroxide breaks down again, releasing massive amounts of oxygen into the atmosphere. This so-called oxygen push at the end of the Cyrogenian is thought to have contributed to life's quick repopulation of the Earth. And with only the hardiest surviving organisms left, the path to the Cambrian explosion would now be free to take. When the Marinoan glaciation ended, 635 million years ago, it marked the end of the Cyrogenian and beginning of the Ediacaran period. With the ice having melted, the Ediacaran saw a swift return of life to Earth. 
During the 95 million year long gap between the end of the Maranoan glaciation and the dynamic Cambrian explosion, life from a handful of extremophile survivors repopulated the Earth and grew to multicellular proportions. Snowball Earth marked the transitioning moment, if not the final push life needed to cross the line from single celled organisms to multicellular. It was an extreme period in the Earth's history, which determined the future evolution of life. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a lot. Be sure to check out more content on my channel. And thanks for watching.